Let's talk about secondary color correction in speak rate CS6. So I've got a shot here on my timeline that has a number of grading layers applied already. Let's quickly take a look. So I've got a effects layer here, a Technicolor 2 strip, and this is my LUT layer, which is just getting it into a cinematic feel. And that's all cool, but the one thing I would like to change here is actually uh, the appearance of the second gymnast. In the original material, uh, we actually had a red and a blue one, and now this has, because of the look we decided to have for this material, has changed into, oh, still a red, but then a not-so-blue one. And the easiest way to go about changing that back to what we need for the second gymnast is to add a secondary layer. So I'm just going to click on plus S here, and you can see that this is now different from what we've been using for most of the other material in terms of just doing the primary color correction. This is opening the keyer for the secondaries, and you can actually go at it multiple ways. So the first thing I could do is just really say, I'm calling one of the six vector presets that I've got, and to make sure I know what's happening, I'm going to go here for the gray out. We've got multiple ways of visualizing that. I personally really like color to gray for the most part. You can see that even with one of the six vectors, I'm easily getting to what originally used to be blue. So that's fine, and I have additional qualifiers like for luminance, and you can then just quickly see what's happening if you isolate that, bring that a little further down. So that's probably all I need. The third one is saturation, and you will easily notice that pretty much all of it is actually in the lower third even of what I need. But uh, there's still, and let's zoom a bit, zoom in a bit to make this visible, there's still a little bit of noise there, and apparently the material had a little bit of compression, so you see these sparkles around here, and I want to make sure that I treat them as best as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is just really blur the key. And that's actually taking care of it for the most part already. I can also denoise it. It almost doesn't matter what kind of source material you've got. The denoise tool is typically really just getting you out of the problem that you have just a couple of pixels somewhere in between that are not a catch yet. So this is just helping you to smooth the key. So coming back out of the gray out, just looking at what's possible now. For example, I can easily now turn to the temperature slider, uh, which is really the easiest one here if I want to get back to the original blue or something that I even like better. It doesn't have to be the original, obviously. Right? So that's super easy to achieve. Uh, alternatively, I will just cl quickly click into the offset tool and then just do it actually a bit more fine-tuned, go for something more intense or just going a different direction. And eventually, even though that's sort of a poster use of secondary correction, but if the cure is qualified in a nice way, you can obviously even make the guy wear something green. Now, for the most part, it's about refining. So, And this is the use I like much better. And this is something you can actually do in each and every session, as opposed to saying the red car is now going to be a green car. So that's cool. But now, actually, I can either bring down the saturation on this one, or I immediately notice it actually might be nice to do something similar just for the red body. And that's going to present a challenge. If you just look at the picture, uh, you'll notice that this is probably not too far from what we have here with the floor. So let's see how that's going to work if I add a, another secondary layer. So th this time, obviously, I'm going to go for the red preset. And if that's not working too well, then you can immediately just turn into the color picker or try to use some of the other presets. So whatever gets you there, right? So I, I can also just say, uh, let's toss all that and just use the pipette. Let me just quickly drop out of here and really just qualify it with the color picker. And you can see that's giving me actually different values, so it's a different hue. And it's also pre-qualifying luminance and saturation. So that might help me a lot getting there. Now, as expected, it's picking up some of the skin tones. It's picking up a lot from the, from the floor. So this one is a more complex secondary, but you can make this work for sure. So let's see what's happening if I play around with luminance. and. That's actually going to help me to pretty much kill almost all of the carpet, right? While still catching the body. So that's nice. But there's that area of overlap where I won't be able to make it work for the entire shot. So let's quickly play this and see what's, what's happening here. So he's actually never touching the outer part. So this makes it super easy for me to just add another tool that will help me achieve what I need to be uh, doing here to work on a secondary qualifier for the red guy. So what I'm doing is pretty much creating a vignette that's... And let me actually go back and do something 
that's even faster. I'll use a circular preset to pretty much exclude the carpet from qualifying my secondary. Coming back here, I will now switch my secondary correction for red to just work inside only. So as you can see, we're not qualifying anything here outside the mask anymore. And that's really sweet and cool because now I can actually go ahead and let me move back to that position here where we saw some of the problems where it didn't pick up correctly. So now I can refine without actually worrying so much about what's happening with everything except for the gymnast itself. So with saturation, I'm going to be able to actually eliminate the skin tones from the selection. And here we go. I'm going to do the same thing, blurring a bit as much as needed, denoise a bit. And I'm actually now ready to go out of color to gray. And for example, give it a bit more saturation. It's now sticking out nicely. It's actually differentiating the second gymnast just really from the background. And this is what I want. It's creating a bit more depth. And if you just look back at the original picture, this is where we're coming from. This is just creating what I want. It's creating a more intense look, a more dramatic look. And I'm good to go with this. And the fascinating thing is this is going to happen real time on your machine if you're working on a powerful workstation with an NVIDIA GPU. So stacking up all these layers is actually not slowing down. In case you wonder why it's slow, it's actually a slow motion shot. So this is a quick introduction how to use secondaries in Adobe Speedgrade CS6.